Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford, so grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business. I hope you had an amazing day, and I, today I am happy to bring to the mic J.E. Tyler, who is an author and a poet, poet who creates compelling and entertaining stories that reflect on the relevant themes which connect the varying cu- cultures of our increasingly diverse society. Since the age of 10, Tyler has written many short stories, poems, and even a play that was performed by the youth group of his home church, Destiny Vision Christian Center. However, it wasn't until December of 2012, at the age of 27, that Tyler wrote and published his first novel, a gripping fantasy page, Pager Turner entitled REG Aftermath. Since then, Tyler has published three novels, including the fan favorite Rumor series, a southern crime drama with an array of both compelling and relatable characters. He, is, he has also published a comedic romantic short story and most recently a children's book entitled Little Angels. Through his media production imprint, Scribe Boy Scribe Media, Tyler plans to expand upon his catalog of printed media by telling stories through the means of film and stage as well. You can find J.E. Tyler's diverse collection of literary literary creations at Amazon.com forward slash author forward slash J.E. Tyler. Well, welcome. Thank Mr. you. Tyler. That was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to tell you that was a mouthful. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to ask my normal question. How did all of this come about? Yes. Uh, so um, I've always had a, 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 a very creative imagination, even as a child. Like I used to... One of my favorite cartoons growing up was Thundercats. And I used to, like, entertain myself when I was alone, like, basically, like, recreating episodes. My grandma had this huge tree in her backyard, and I would walk around the tree basically just making up episodes. So needless to say, my family thought I was crazy for a while. But it wasn't until uh, it wasn't until my fifth grade year, my teacher, her name was Mrs. Bell, and she uh she wanted us to write a different story every month. So uh she kinda forced all of us, everybody in the class had to do it. And so I wrote a story one one month and I had to read it in front of the class and literally everybody loved it. And so I took it home to my mom and I showed my mom and she loved it. She was surprised that, you know, she didn't know and so then I took it, you no, know, so she took it to work with her and showed her coworkers. And they were all surprised as well, like that a 10 year old actually did this. And so, you know, all that feedback, it kind of just, it, it, it fueled me. And it was neat, unbeknownst to me, it was something I was already in love with doing anyway. So it just kind of just grew from there. Wow. And that's awesome because, I mean, at a very Thank young you age you already knew what you were going to do so that's yes, awesome mm-hmm. that is very awesome Thank so you. your recent um uh literary uh little angels what is that all about yes so it is a children's book um it came about because my a uh, friend of mine a really close friend of mine she uh, she owns her own nonprofit, which basically services impoverished families with uh, babies and toddlers by helping them to, you know, provide them the necessities that they need to in order to take care of their 
child. So, uh, you know, listening to her talk about her organization as she was opening it and and as she's coming up with all the ideas, how to service the community, I was inspired by that. And so I wrote this story of an orphan who wishes to have a family of her own and wishes to have a little brother. And so her dreams of having a brother basically causes this this magical, literal baby shower, a shower of all types of baby necessities to rain from these rain, rain from the sky. And a stork also comes down as well and brings her baby brother. And all of the necessities that fall from the sky, basically the community grab them and they all come together and it's this nice baby shower. So it's, it's, it's a really magical story, really beautiful story. It rhymes. It's almost like an urban nursery rhyme type uh story but it also hits on some very real themes as far as you know orphans and 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 children who are without families and impoverished families and things of that nature but still in a light magical tone for children oh that is something i have to pick that up for my grandchildren for my great-grandchildren i should say (laughs) yes ma'am i'm sure they'll love it Yes, yes, and you've got some other publications as well. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the other work that you've done. Yes, so um, I have three uh, novels. Uh, Of course, the first one being uh, R.E.G. Aftermath, which is more of a, a, a a fantasy, speculative fiction type story. But basically, it's about the bond between two brothers. Um, when everybody in the world, including their own father, questions one brother, his older brother still does not give up on him, and he literally goes through the most extreme of situations in order to save his brother. So it's just all about that loyalty and love between family. Um, And then there's the story, then there's the Rumor uh, series, which is basically, it's two books. It's Rumor, Daughter of Lies. And then there's rumor and deception. And throughout both books, it just chronicles this one child as she's growing up. And it's an entire ensemble cast of characters around her within this small southern town. And when she finds out that everybody has been lying to her about her mother, the person she identifies with the most but has not known since she was a baby, um, that image shatters and it brings her into this identity crisis that kind of just ripples out into everyone. And it's, 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 it's a lot of things going on. It's very entertaining and it has a really, really heartfelt message. Oh, I noticed that you, it's called a Southern crime drama. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Why is that? Is that because of the lie that was told about her mother? Yes. So, um, I'm from the South. I'm from Alabama. So uh-huh. uh, as I wrote, as yes, as I wrote Rumor, uh a lot of the the setting, the the even the way people speak, the way people interact, it's just a lot of it I borrowed from the things that I saw growing mm-hmm. up. So um that that southern that southern aspect of a story from the dialect and everything involved it it, it it's a big part of it. So uh, that's kind of why I went with that, especially as far as I know, like when when you're in those southern towns, like the the church pretty much is like, you know, like runs the town. Mm-hmm. So and in this story, the church plays a really big part um, mm-hmm. in everything that is happening, and and it does run this town. So it for me that was. Yeah, that was a big thing. Very familiar. Now, the the issues that go on, uh, you know, I made a lot of it up and borrowed from a lot of things. So it's not like based on my life, but as far as those southern, those southern uh, aspects of southern life, I definitely mm-hmm. relied heavily on my experiences. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. part of writing is to be able to pull from your experiences. It may not be an exact representation, but to pull from your experiences. Exactly. Now, now, we can talk about that a little bit, too, but I want to talk about the transition. You um, wrote a play that you did for your youth group in yes, your home ma'am. church. Mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the 
I guess first to talk about the difference between writing fiction stories, Mm -hmm. writing poetry, and then making that transition from stories and poetry to theater. Yes. Um, So uh, now uh, writing in itself, it all, you know, I, I, I just pull basically from my creativity and my emotions. So when it comes to, like, whether it's creating stories or creating poetry, it's just, like, what I'm feeling at the moment, it usually just develops into a beautiful story. Uh, now, the difference is um, whether it's a – if it's a short story, um, basically sitting down in that setting trying to put together something that's compelling, but it's usually it's short and it's, it's at, in that time. Now, if I'm writing a novel, uh, that takes a lot of dedication. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and it takes it, it happens over a long period of time. So, you know, that, that takes a lot more focus and a lot more dedication. Uh, now, when it comes to a play, that's a very interesting thing. That, that was, that was, it was very interesting because a play, you know, when it comes to stories and poems and things, a lot of that is internal. Like, as I'm reading it, I'm still able to keep a lot of that inside. When it comes to a play, that's being performed for people to see, and it literally mm-hmm. comes alive right in front of you. So it's a very interesting dynamic, and as a, an artist, it's, it's, it's beautiful to see because mm-hmm. when you spend so much of your time being internal and, 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 and putting those on page, but then to actually just see it come alive, it's, it's a phenomenal feeling. It really is. Mm, not bad. Do you find it mm-hmm. difficult to make that transition from writing, like you said, from the internal p- point of view, to mm-hmm. writing to be seen and to be heard? Um, it can be challenging in the way that uh, so other parties come into play. So mm-hmm. literally, when actors are performing, or if you got a director. Um, that's their perception of your work, right? Okay. So it's, it's, it becomes challenging in that way because you literally, it's not all about me anymore. It's not all about uh-huh. my perception or what I intended. It, okay. it becomes, you know, where what whatever they're pulling from it at that point is what I'm seeing. And that can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. But... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can definitely. Yeah, that that can definitely be a challenge. When you write, uh, um, mm-hmm. this is just a question. Mm-hmm. Do you, especially stories, uh, right. and I know I'm sure in poetry that happens. It happens too. Do mm-hmm. you write in scenes? Do you have a, a? Do you create a specific scene in your mind and write mm-hmm. the scene? Mm-hmm. How do you create your? Mm-hmm. Uh, your framework in which you work. Yeah. And I guess that's what I'm asking for mm-hmm. my own reasons. Yeah. Yeah. I think our audience, there's somebody out there who's dying to hear this because they, they have an idea, uh, but they don't know how to put it together. And some right. writers can just write and it all falls together. Other writers right. have to create like the scene. And they right, write right. the scenes. Right. No, now that's a great question because it, so, uh, especially, so I think you hit it on the, on the, you hit the nail on the head. When it comes to writing, you definitely want to kind of create that world around yourself, um, to just to get, put yourself into the framework of what it is, because especially if you're talking about a novel, like you're going to be devoting yourself to this for months at a time. So in order to stay consistent, you kind of have to create a reality to put yourself in so that you, it, 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 it all makes sense because in essence, you're telling a story that does not exist. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to be consistent with it and in order for it to be realistic for you, it has to exist. So, uh, for me, I usually, before I even begin writing, I spend a lot of time thinking about the story and thinking about the characters and kind of just putting together 
what type of person is this? Like what what motivates them? What it is? What it, what do they want in this story? What is it they're trying to do? Um, where are we? And I try to picture it in my head. Like so, um, like I said, with having a play, you can see it in front of you, but with a story, you see it on the inside. But yeah. you still so you still have to see it, and you still have to build that. That way, when you go into you doing your descriptors and things, like you're literally just telling the page what you see in your head. Ooh, I like I'm not sure if I answered the question, but I, yeah, I like yeah. The way you, yeah, yeah, I like the way you put that. That's <laughs> <excellent. it> <laughs> that's, that's very very fine because those are the things that people, you know, there everyone has a book in them. Everyone has a story to tell. Very true. And some of them come out as memoirs, but it's still the same right. internal to external, internally bringing all those thoughts into play and getting right. them down on paper in such a way that it, you're true to yourself, you're true to right. the idea that you have, but right. that it's also appealing to others. And exactly. That's the, the power and the magic of writing. Oh, uh, yes, so true. Yeah. So true. Um, well, we could have a long conversation about this because this <laughs> writing is just so... It's so amazing when you think about yeah. there are a lot of books out there, but there are some books that you read and you they're part of you for the rest of your life. That's why reading is so important in childhood. Mm-hmm. That children exactly. are in, in in taught to read. You know, come right. out from in front of the television, come out right. of your games, pick up a book and read because right. the imagination is yes. fired when you're reading. Exactly. And, and that's what I loved as a child was that uh, mm-hmm. my mother, we were in the library every week. Right. And twice as much during the summer. And we had reading right. lists when I was in school that we had right. to complete during the year, and then we had a summer reading list. But right. it was so wonderful. I mean, you can go anywhere in a book. You can be yes. anyone in a book. It, you can exactly. Exactly. So many things. <laughs> I was on a written yes. page, and your imagination mm-hmm. creates it. And if you it's, talk it's to two different thing. children, their mm-hmm. imaginations all are different. They see and yes. feel and hear different things. Mm-hmm. Can yes. you talk about that and how important that is, please? It's 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 it, for, in, in my opinion, it's extremely important. It's exp- um, I feel like. I feel like creativity is the basis, it's the foundation for pretty much everything you learn um, mm-hmm. as far as how to to navigate the world. Um, it, 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 it's the basis for, you know, just managing thought and, 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 and uh, being able to have vision and foresee things and, 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 and manifest on things. Um, so I feel like if if we're not enabling our children to be able to to have those creative mindsets, then we're doing a disservice to them. Mm-hmm. So it's like you said, reading reading does that. Reading does that like nothing else does. And I can say myself, even to this day, if if a book is adapted into film, <laughs> um, I have to read. So I have to watch the film first before mm-hmm. I read the book because okay. if I read the book first, I'm not going to enjoy the film because exactly. literally, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. You, That's how I am. <laughs> yeah, same. So it's like when you when you read the the book, you literally you your mind makes it everything. So you see it the way you want to see it, and the exactly. story comes together in a way that makes sense to you. The visuals as far. Mm-hmm. And but then if you see it on on film, like that's what's being dictated to you. So yeah. it's just it's a certain amount of magic in being able to just create a world on your own, like from somebody else's words, and it just grows and blossoms within your mind. Like I feel like it's power, and uh-huh. yes. you know it's power that everyday man possesses, and we yeah we have to we have a responsibility to develop that. Yeah. You know, uh, you said something that's oh yeah, we could talk forever. Uh <laughs> um one of the there's so many that have books that popped into my mind as you said right. that. 
Right. Um, and one of them, which is uh, probably one of my favorite books, is The Color Purple. Mm, yes. Now, I saw the movie actually before I read the book. Uh-huh. And I, that's where great filmmaking is. Right. When you turn around and read the book afterwards and you say, oh, my goodness, they captured they yes, captured the feeling, the the people, <laughs> yes. the uh, yeah. the characterization that right. Walker created, that whole world that she created. They right. actually captured it in the film. You right. know, uh, mm-hmm. it's, I I I have something on my wall, and I'm still not sure who, uh, if it's Emerson or Whitman mm-hmm. who said the imagination. What you have imagined in the seen in the past, and what you imagine in the future, is nothing compared to what is lies inside of you. Mm, and true, mm, powerful. That is that's, powerful. Yeah, and it's just if I could teach a child mm-hmm. to reach inside of themselves, right, for what's really there, and right. imagine that into being, right. It would just be such a powerful experience. Yes, and I think exactly. that's what I see so lacking in so many of our mm-hmm. young children. Right. That telling them to reach inside and bring out what's inside of them. Right. Um, and I was fortunate that I had a teacher who was like that. So right. I can I can relate to your teacher experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, she saw something and she was like excited. And right. so she started sharing it around. And then right. your mother saw it. And then right. her friend saw it and was like, oh. and then it it it, it affirmed yes, who you exactly. already were. Right. Mm-hmm. And this is something that is so important um, in childhood because every child comes into the world with a gift. Every exactly. child. Yes. Mm-hmm. So true. And if it's not affirmed, it goes underground. They forget about it. They they ignore it. Uh, if it right. pops up, you know, they take a hammer, a sledgehammer, and beat it back down into the ground because no one's ever affirmed it for them that, you know, yeah, this is who you are. Yep. And it's a good exactly. thing. Exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's so true. And it even goes so as far as, like, building their confidence and, and, and all, you know, things like that because – I always feel like if you're walking outside of outside of your purpose, uh, you know that kind of sticks with you. You just don't feel right. You don't feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like you're a fish out of water. And I just feel like yeah. that's a lot of times when you see kids who just who, who stay in trouble, um, what they consider at risk children. A lot of times these kids are walking outside their purpose. They feel like a fish outside of water. They feel mm-hmm. weird, so they're acting out to try to take the attention away from that and things of that nature. So, yeah, I, I agree. I feel like that's important for them to tap into mm-hmm. that gift. And yeah. it's interesting that you said that because <laughs> when you take some of those at-risk, quote-unquote, at-risk children, mm-hmm. and you put them into the into creative endeavors, be it, you know, trying right. to paint, um, right. singing, dancing, theater, whatever, all of a right. sudden they connect. It's like yes. they they find something and they say, oh, oh, that's me. This, right. Oh, oh, I. Oh my goodness, I. I this is. And it's so. Exactly. It's oh my goodness. Uh, the creative arts, and everybody is creative. We were born right. with the gift of creativity, but we. Right. Oh my goodness, we just do not encourage it. Right. You know, we don't encourage it, and it's such a shame because there are all kinds of. Tal- not just talented, mm. but people who have something of so much value to give in this right. world. Whether it's a painting or a song right. or a poem or a story, right. and they never do it. Yeah, exactly. But I mm-hmm. think now that, you know, there's more and more awareness going on uh, mm-hmm. in terms of creativity and supporting our young people that. I think it's getting better now because, mm-hmm. I mean, just like uh, with the Speak Life Tour, that's yes, all about, right. mm-hmm. you know, that's all about kids being able to 
use their creativity to right. make a difference. Right. And I think no, there's more and more awareness surrounding that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just a matter of kids being connected with it. Right. Yeah. Right, and no, that exposure needs true. to come young. Yes, and I think this more has to do with, you know, your first learning is at home. Right. So if your parents aren't in, aren't um, really paying attention to you and mm-hmm. what excites you, right, mm-hmm. then that gets lost. Exactly. That truth Very gets true. lost. But Very anyway, true. oh my God, this has just been hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, we could talk for a long time. This is yes, um, a super yes, important. It's been great, I've, I've enjoyed it. <laughs> yes. So let me ask you, Tyler. Uh, you talked about doing some film and stage. Yes. So what's on your mind? Yes, so um, I actually have a short story that's available on my blog. It's called The Girl Who Stole from Fire. Um, it's an extremely powerful story. Um, I, two different people have read it and have uh, came to tears, one particular in front of me. So uh, I, I feel like I have something with it, but it's a short story, so I never published it because it's very short, and I wanted to, so I wanted to figure out how to use it. Um, so my plan is to adapt it into a stage play uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, try to produce that and make that happen. Mm, okay. okay. I can't yeah, wait. That was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. yes. So I'm, how... I'm gonna... mm-hmm. Go ahead. I was just going to say, yes, I'm, I'm determined. I'm going to make it happen. I believe you because I mean what I've saw so far in your in your writing you you're definitely on the roll. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, how can our um, audience connect with you? Yes. yes. So uh, the best way to connect with me is on Instagram. Um, I have two separate pages. So I have one uh, script boy is at s c i wait at s c r i b b o y script boy and then uh so that one is more just basically concentrated my work so it'll be just anything pertaining to my creative work uh then i have at king james underscore tyler version uh so that one you can get a little bit more of me as a person. So it'll also have my work and everything that you'll see on Script Boy, but you also get a little bit more of, you know, me and and my life, you know, so people can understand who it is that I am. Uh, so, But those are the best ways to get in touch with me, or either by email, uh, jtyler1985 at live.com, jtyler1985 at live.com. Okay. So I got, I have one more question for you. I do too. So there's two more. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, script boy scribe. Yes, ma'am. How did you come up with that? So um, it, initially, when I started this whole book journey, uh, my imprint was Zodiac Gifted Publishing. Um, recently I wanted to do a rebrand and try something, uh, you know, try something a little bit more catchy. Um, so I thought about it for a very long time. So the scribboy basically comes from scribble, like thinking to write. So you're just scribbling down on paper. Uh, but I, I didn't want to say scribble boy. I wanted to keep it, you know, make it different, unique. So scribboy. And then scribe, I'm a scribe, I write, so a scribble, a scribe. And um, I'm, I'm trying to make that a media brand. Uh, like I said, um, I focused on uh, print media up until this point, so now I kind of just want to expand and, 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 and go as far as God will allow me. So, mm-hmm. And uh, all of that will be scribble, a scribe media. Okay. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Do we when have I time saw for... it, it made me oh, chuckle. 
when mm-hmm. I saw it, it made me chuckle. It, 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 it uh, brought a smile to my face. Thank you. That's that's exactly what I want to hear. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> great. Okay. I have one last question, and this is really mm-hmm. for yes, our ma'am. listening audience. There, like I said, there are probably people out there who are thinking, oh, I really do want to write this book. And right. they have the opportunity right now in listening to you to listen to a published author. Right. And they wonder, you know, well, how does he go about this? Does he right. have a particular thing that he does? What is his routine? Does he mm. go off to some little corner cabin in the woods to write? What is your <laughs> routine for writing? Um, so I can't, so the, the interesting thing about writing for me is you want to, you want to catch the inspiration, uh, which can come at any time. So, uh, a big tool for me is my cell phone, actually. You know, you have the notes, the notes app on the cell phone. Mm-hmm. So basically whenever something comes to me, no matter where I am, uh, I pull out my cell phone and I'm capturing it within my notes. And that way, when I have time to sit down and write at another point, I can pull from the notes. So that's why I'm never missing inspiration. Cause I think that's the big thing. You want to have something accessible where you can always write down those ideas. Cause, uh, I can't speak for everyone, but I think most people it happens this way. Ideas just come randomly. Mm-hmm. depending on what you're inspired by at any moment. So uh, I think that's the big thing. And then as far as just beginning a book, uh, I think the biggest thing is a lot of people get caught up on the technicalities and get mm-hmm. caught up on trying to make it perfect. Uh, I think the biggest thing is just to get whatever is in your mind onto the page. So I always tell people just talk to the page. Like like you're having a conversation just imagine you're having a conversation and type whatever it is that's coming into your mind or write or physically write whatever it is, but just talk to the page as if you're having a conversation. And then after the fact, you know, that's what the editing phase is for as far as cleaning it up and, and uh, as far as the structure and the grammar and things of that nature. But I think the biggest thing is just to get those ideas out. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. And before we wrap up, mm-hmm. uh, one more time, can you tell our audience how they can connect with you? Yes. So the best way to connect with me is on Instagram. You can follow my uh, – you can I have one of two pages. I have Scriboy at S-C-R-I-B-B-O-Y and also at King James underscore – Tyler version as T Y L E R V E R S I O N. Um, and then there's also my email. Email me anytime. I love feedback. I love questions. I, I respond. Uh, J Tyler1985 at L I V E dot com. And you're so absolutely right, Tyler. You do respond because yes. as soon as yes. I <laughs> sent us. Push the send button. I had a reply back from him. Yes. I just I, loved I, I, I it. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my pet peeves is, uh, you know, when I'm talking to you in an email, talk yeah. back. Right. Right. Yes. No, I'm, I'm very responsive because it, it comes all to my phone. You know, cell phones now are, they can be our, our, our biggest enemy or they can be our greatest asset. And, with my emails coming to my cell, it's perfect. I'm I'm very attentive to them. Yes, I was so I was smiling. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I like him already. <laughs> well, anyway, this has been an awesome, awesome conversation. Yes. I really you. enjoyed. You kind of like really made me visualize uh, sitting down to write. You know, yeah, I like yeah. to write as well. And uh, like yourself, ideas, when you, when you said something about ideas coming to you, um, mm-hmm. you know, they, now that we have the cell phone, it's great because you can put them in your notes. But prior right. to that, I would keep a little notebook 
uh, right. around mm-hmm. and just if I come up with an idea, I kind of quickly write it down because right. sometimes they leave you just as quick as they come. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yes. And once yes. they're gone, it's hard to recall them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the the beauty of the cell phone. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes. It's awesome when you use it right, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, we thank you for taking thank time out of your schedule to join Most us definitely. today. And I'm sure our listening audience is going to really love this this show yes. because you're such a warm-spirited person. Thank and you. we can feel the passion that you have for writing. Thank you. Yes. Yes, indeed. No, I, I thank you guys for inviting me. I, I had a blast. This was an awesome conversation. Yes, we enjoyed it's it right. as well. Yes. Indeed. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> thank you. This show is brought to you by the amazing women of a Sister Circle Empowerment Network, a Sin LLC where we are never in competition, but always in collaboration. And our valued sponsors. Learn more about our sponsors and their services and membership in a sister circle, a SIN LLC, at www.assistercircle.org. To learn about becoming a sponsor for Just Minding My Business Radio and how our marketing package benefits your company, please visit our website at www.assistercircle.org. Voiceovers by RCH Voiceworks. Contact slvoiceworks8201 at yahoo.com or call 443-620-4115. for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. We hope you enjoy the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.